So this video is my Zwift for beginners video. My name is Ryan Condon and I make fitness, Zwifting and running related videos that I upload to my channel on a weekly basis. Now I've made nearly 50 Zwift or cycling related videos since joining Zwift for the first time back in May of 2023. I think I need to learn what cadence is. I think I know what's his power put down. I'm also an IRL novice cyclist. I occasionally venture outside on a bike when I'm not falling over in cleats. Shit. At the point of making this video, I've raced in almost 100 races, not including workouts and other challenges, such as my multiple bikes up out to Zwift, and I completed the Four Horsemen 11 months ago now. Time flies when you're having fun. Now, the only reason I mention this is because I was a capable Cat D rider who recently got promoted to C, and everything I have learned, I have learned through the baptism of fire on Zwift. Anyone who regularly watches my channel will know that I'm a complete cardio addict and Zwift flicks that switch inside me that motivates me to get up exercising on almost a daily basis. And this level of motivation is worth its weight in gold. Now, I'm going to add a quick disclaimer for the hardcore Zwifter or cycling enthusiast watching this video waiting to critique my novice advice. What I know about the inner depths of Zwift from an elite perspective, you can write on the back of a postage stamp. But having now been racing on Zwift for 16 months, what I do know is what it's like for a complete beginner. So me 16 months ago. And what I would do now if I was starting on Zwift for the first time, having now made every single mistake under the Watopian sun. So the benefit of time in this video and to ensure it doesn't stretch out into a Steven Spielberg epic, I'm going to assume that you have or you already know what smart bike or indoor trainer you are going to use or you're currently using. I'm skipping this stuff as there's loads of other YouTube videos out there that cover this in far more detail than I would ever want to cover. For the record, I used the Watt Bike Atom and I bought it over all the other hundreds of alternatives for one simple reason. At the time, so 16 months ago, I was still really heavy. I weighed a lot more than I do now and I was worried that my weight pounding up and down in the massive sprints that I do would damage a lighter framed bike. I think the seat needs to go up. I need to measure myself properly. I'm not sponsored by what bike or even Zwift for that matter. I'm sharing this as this is what I use. I've seen just as good setups with a second hand frame, an entry level indoor trainer and a set of Zwift controllers for steering and virtual shifting. Whatever you choose to eventually use, I hope this video helps to motivate you back on the bike and even win a race or three. At the very least, I hope it motivates you. Also, from a setup perspective, I'd recommend downloading and using Zwift on a laptop or PC and where possible, connect it to your TV or desktop monitor for a bigger screen experience. Outside of the summer and spring, I spend more time on Zwift a week than I do watching TV or Netflix, for example. So it makes no sense for me to ride using a small screen like an iPad or even a mobile phone. It also baffles me why some choose to spend thousands on their indoor trainer, myself in Included, and then ride for hours a week looking at a mobile phone screen bolted to their handlebars. Now when I watch a movie I like to watch it on a big screen don't we all? I feel the same about my daily rides on Zwift so I have a second monitor connected to my desktop computer that I use as a designated Zwifting monitor. However you choose to use Zwift and for the record there is no wrong way as long as you're exercising my tip is to make the experience as easy and as immersive as physically possible or as immersive as your budget allows you to. Like anything in life that requires motivation to keep doing it, you will want to remove all the barriers to your motivation. Get your setup tailored to you, as close to ready to go as possible. If you have to spend 30 minutes searching for clothes, your laptop, plugging in wires, connecting frames to indoor trainers every time you want to Zwift, then the novelty will wear off and that indoor trainer will quickly become a dust gatherer in the garage. Maybe even consider creating a permanently designated area for your Zwift setup, or as it's known in the trade, or Swift community, a pain cave. So this is the before we clear it out, ready for our new pain cave. Shall I call it the pain cave? 
No. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to my channel. Your support is very much appreciated. If you're looking to Zwift for increased fitness, become a stronger cyclist, lose weight, or a combination of all, then consistency is key. I recently made a reaction video about another video that I watched online where they got their views of fitness, in my view, completely catastrophically wrong. If you haven't watched that video yet, please go and check it out. In reality, exercising is a bad way to burn fat. So when they make a video that's complete b the one biggest thing they forgot or intentionally left out was consistency and specifically consistency towards your fitness being structured finding the time to exercise and staying motivated to want to do it basically get off your arm now this is probably the best tip i can give anyone looking to succeed with their fitness to stay consistent try and remove all the barriers to your motivation to want to exercise if you do nothing else on the back of this video and that's the only thing you do do then it's worth making this video now this tip works for all aspects of exercise but in the context of zwift make the act of getting on the bike as frictionless as possible make sure you can switch everything on and you can get Zwift in without having to mess about with wires, power supplies, monitors, finding laptops, all the things that get in the way of you exercising. Now, I love Zwift. It's one of the reasons I'm making this video. I'm a huge fan. It affords me the luxury of having a structured workout or plan. It means I can cycle even if it's raining and let's face it I live in the UK it's always raining. It's revolutionized my fitness levels and massively helped me lose weight but the main reason I love Zwift is that it allows me to bike race from the safety of my own house. If you've seen my IRL cycling videos then you will know exactly what I mean. Okay annoyingly I wasn't filming but I just had my first full on fall off the bike. Now the first thing I discovered having set up my pain cave and jumped on it for the first time, Zwift is not easy. Now of course there are easy zone one, two and three workouts, there's group social rides, even pace partners to train with. But everything from the road surface, inclines, weight to power ratio has all been designed to be as realistic as possible or as realistic as a computer game world that includes Mario Kart power-ups can be. Exit. Right, I'm going to leave this game because it's dead boring. I'm going to have a race. Even your bike frames and wheels that you can choose between in your garage have advantages and disadvantages depending on the type of surface you're riding on or the gradient you're climbing or descending. As a complete novice at the time, as a complete noob, I had absolutely no idea that my bike, my avatar was riding on, made any significant difference. So the first 10 or so races I raced in, I rode around on a basic TT frame that offered me zero draft benefit and I was sabotaging any chance I had of being competitive in a race. It took me absolutely ages to realize this as there is no tutorial it was a light bulb moment when I eventually raced with an aero frame for the first time it made my first 10 races feel like I was riding through treacle now I would say this was embarrassing but as a complete non-cyclist before taking up Zwifting I had no way of knowing as there is no tutorial so unlike cycling around in GTA 5 for example in Zwift you have to work really hard to keep moving forward with any real meaning and even then everything in the game is trying everything to slow you down your leg power generates raw watts. Zwift then uses your indoor trainer or speed and cadence sensors and incorporates your weight that you've already entered into the system on sign up to determine your in-game speed. Now this is a very simplistic way of saying that to stay competitive in Zwift, and let's face it, we all want to win races in Zwift, then you need to understand the basics of the in-game power meters and metrics, as well as the in-game dynamics such as surface, gradient and aero resistance and the bloody bike frames and wheels. <laughs> the first thing you will very quickly find out about when starting on Zwift, if you haven't done so already, is that there is no tutorial, there's no walkthrough. And even though Zwift is a full-blown computer game simulation of IRL cycling, it does not ease you in gently, especially if you wanna race other races. So the first tip is to jump in feet first. Literally, this is the best tip Aside from removing friction and barriers to your motivation, the best tip I can offer you is jump in feet first. And if you haven't done so already, give a race a shot. This is what I did and I haven't looked back since. Now, my first impressions and experience of Zwift, joining it as a complete beginner and cycling novice, was overwhelmingly positive, which is one of the reasons I'm making this video. I've just unlocked my first 10 miles. And then this 
FTP test, hour long, over an hour, FTP test, done. My backside is killing me. I found that the community on Zwift is extremely supportive. There are loads of great resources such as Zwift Insider. And within the software itself, there are loads of great training plans, workouts, but, and this is a big but, Zwift of course has one of the best fitness tests out there, which is a mountain, a pixelated mountain called Out to Zwift. Quite literally one of my most favorite masochistic pixelated mountains online. I need to specify before my comment section explodes on the back of this, Out to Zwift is not officially a fitness test. The grade or a formally structured FTP test in the workout screens are officially fitness tests. But attempting to complete a PR and then subsequently training to improve on that Out to Zwift 90 day PR. Okay, I don't have a ghost, annoyingly. So I don't have a 90 day PR. So that tactic, has gone out the window. I think is probably a much more accurate representation of your progress and current Zwifting prowess. Now, there was no way I was gonna make a Zwifting video that literally said, download the app, get Zwift Companion, get yourself a bike and away you go. Of course, I was gonna throw in something controversial. That's my controversial point. Out to Zwift, I think is the best fitness test out there. Keep going, Ryan! Keep going! I fucked up, Eric! I stopped! Now, Having said that, this is, of course, if you have the patience and endurance to want to climb Zwift's in-game representation of Out Du Huez. The average time up Out Du Zwift is well over an hour, but I highly recommend it if you're looking for a really hard challenge to overcome and if you want something to aim for moving forward. As you can probably tell, I'm a huge fan of climbing Out Du Zwift. I'm going to put that out there. It's my favourite thing to do. However, what I will say as a beginner, can I say I'm a beginner now? I've moved on from D, been promoted to C, I've been Zwifting for 16 months. I'd probably say that I am a novice with aspirations of becoming competent at some point. I sound like my mum now in my head. For the benefits of this video, 16 months ago when I first set foot on my Watt bike, I had zero understanding when I jumped in feet first, and what I know now is from 16 months of extreme trial and error. Racing with a TT frame wearing a jumper without a fan is the best example I can offer you to prove how far I've come. Forget about what category I'm in, forget about how many races I've won, that's the best example I can offer you about how far I've come. Most other videos you'll watch on YouTube if you type in Zwift for beginners will recommend starting with an FTP test or a workout routine to get used to it. You can do that, it's probably the sensible thing to do, but I'm not that sensible. And as Tank said in the movie, The Matrix, I'm supposed to start with these operation programs first. That's some really boring shit. Okay. So I'm suggesting you jump in feet first in the deep end and race. I've already said that, I've said it again. Give a race a shot, guys. You'll love it. Let's do something a little more fun. How about combat training? You'll know 10 times more after a month on Zwift racing than you would do free riding. And the biggest thing your baptism of hellfire, Zwift racing, will teach you is that Zwift is broken down into four categories. Well, it is at the moment anyway. It looks like Zwift will be bringing in racing scores, but for now, it's based on category A, B, C, and D. A is the elite level, down to D being beginner or entry level. And the category you ultimately end up in is based on a few races and on a combination of your raw watts divided by your weight, which will give you your watts per kg or your power input versus your weight. So in edit, this is always the way, as soon as you make a video, I found in the Zwift forum that Zwift have announced that the new Zwift racing score that replaces the existing weight-based categories, the new Zwift racing score is going to be rolled out basically from October. So each rider or racer within Zwift will have a Zwift racing score of one to a thousand, thousand being elite level and one being entry level. So your score will be somewhere in there and then that will be broken down and you'll be placed in a newer Zwift racing score category based on that number. And it provides a more accurate reflection of your racing capabilities based on real race performances and power outputs. This means that, and these are the bullet points, that there will be competitive categories. As I say, I'm going to put all this in the description of the video. So if you do want to have a read of this forum post, please feel free to click there and have a read yourself. Now, something that I regularly shout about in my Zwift videos is something that I don't always achieve, and that is to not allow myself to get dropped in races. In every race that you enter, there will 
will inevitably be a front pack and then as the race progresses a chase group. The size and numbers of these groups will vary depending on the race size, amount of people in them, but my aim and probably the aim of every competitive racing Zwifter out there is to not only latch onto the lead group but remain there for the entirety of the race without getting dropped. To attempt to achieve this with varying degrees of success, I was much better at it in Cat D, there are two things I focus on. Always, and I mean always, get off the start line with the leaders. I've never really understood why anyone gets dropped here. On the start line, you're fresh, you have power to burn, there's no excuse to getting dropped on the start line. Do whatever it takes to latch onto the lead pack without, of course, being the leader. And this leads me on to my second point, and that is that there is another skill to master that will help bolster your watts per kg in a race and will give you a huge advantage if you get it right and that's called drafting. something I wish I understood right from the beginning. In simplistic terms, because I'm a simple man, drafting on Zwift, and I'm reliably informed is similar in real life, I said similar, Zwift in commenters, is the act of sticking your head up the ass of another rider you are racing against. So basically you get them to do the work and you enjoy their draft. Wind and aerodynamics play a huge part in racing and there is a huge disadvantage to racing alone versus as part of a pack. The amount of times I used to race with my head and frame straight into the wind was embarrassingly high. So having the foresight and skill to not only drop enough watts to stick with a group, but to then also effectively steer into the draft will mean you can reduce your power output without compromising on your speed. Now this is a direct quote from Zwift Insider, just to prove I'm not completely making this up. The amount of energy saved by drafting is no marginal gain. It is literally the difference between winning and losing in every bike race. Estimates vary, but the number most often thrown around is a 30% power saving when drafting behind just one other rider. Having anything up to a 30% saving is huge. Now there are nuances within the skill of drafting and there are many Many schools of thought about the best locations within a pack to get maximum 30% power reducing benefit, but as long as you start a race with the intention of trying your hardest to stick with a lead pack and then focus on not only getting into the draft but also staying in it, then this allows you to focus on the rest of the race and maybe even attempt a sprint finish. Something I'm working on. Now I'm not going to offer any advice on sprinting for the win as I'm still working on that one myself but if you make it to the end of a race with a chance to sprint for the podium then you're doing a lot of things right and my advice here would simply be keep going as you're already smashing it. As a beginner regardless of what category you're placed in you will need to develop thick skin and quickly get used to losing. Don't give up and keep on keeping on. Try and quickly learn what your strengths and weaknesses are, aside from just focusing on how hard Zwift races can be. Now for me, I'm not an explosive sprinter. I'm pretty much guaranteed to lose any sprint I enter or attempt in Cat C, simply because of my watts versus weight ratio, as I'm still fairly heavy. I weigh 92.4 kgs at point of making this video, so really hilly routes don't complement my aim of sticking with the leaders and definitely work against my don't get dropped mentality. But I do have bundles of endurance and I recover really really quickly after big effort so I choose routes based on these advantages. My favourite two Zwift routes aside from Out the Zwift but I'd never race up Out the Zwift that would be suicidal. My favourite two Zwift routes are Seaside Sprint in Watopia and RGV in France. Now that doesn't mean I don't race on hilly routes. I regularly race in the official weekly Zwift races. These are challenging as they're popular and depending on the time of day and even the day of the week, they can attract some of the best racers in the category. But knowing this and knowing your skill base, you can handpick races that complement you rather than work against you before you even start. So in a nutshell, if you consider yourself on the lighter end of the spectrum, maybe look at undulating or even hilly races where your power to weight ratio will give you a huge advantage climbing. Ah, come on! Yes! Yes! 
And if you're on the heavier side like me, then go for flatter but faster courses where your weight, believe it or not, can be an advantage. Being a heavier rider powering into shorter inclines, especially rollers, can give you a big advantage in the form of a slingshot effect that catapults you over the top and down the other side. For those longer climbs, everything is working against you. You have no advantage. So you will need as much time as possible to get to the top without being dropped. So speed and power is the name of the game on these max endurance efforts. Don't wait and don't draft. Just get to the top as quickly as you can and hope with fingers crossed that you don't get dropped. And that's it guys, this is my two pence worth on Zwift for beginners. Oh, and one other thing, buy yourself a really decent pair of bib shorts and an industrial strength fan. I fairly recently attempted to Everest on Zwift. This is a thing where riders attempt to cycle the height of Everest. I quit halfway because my saddle was slowly being inserted into me and this was still with me wearing two pairs of padded shorts. Cycling for any distance, no matter how far, especially if you're not used to it, can ruin your day. It can take away the enjoyment and make getting back on the bike trainer that much harder next time, especially if you have to endure pain. And don't forget a decent industrial strength fan. Staying cool and comfortable will reduce your heart rate, which ultimately will result in a higher watt per kg average across that winning Zwift race. Good luck, ride on, and maybe see you in Watopia. If you do see me in a race, please don't drop me. I need all the help I can get. See you in next week's video.